Hello and welcome to Ask the Pastor on 97.1 KCMI Hope Radio. We're uh, glad you're listening to Ask the Pastor here and you're listening to the worship leaders here of a few different churches. I'm Pastor Ken Bear from Mitchell Berean Church. I'm Antonia Cortez from the Rock Church. I'm Cody Peterson from Westway Christian Church. And uh, today what we're going to be talking about is kind of our philosophy of worship ministry. And then maybe if we have time, we might get into some of the more practical aspects of um maybe some behind the scenes, like why we choose the songs we choose and different things like that. So, um, Ken, I'm going to ask you to, to kick it off and Sweet. talk about, like, what is your philosophy of, of worship? Um, well, what worship, we've talked about it about every single session. That worship <laughs> is a lifestyle, and we yeah. really see that uh, modeled in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, when it says uh, our spiritual sacrifice is our, our obedience to Christ. So, um Worship is a continual daily, moment-by-moment offering to Christ by laying down our will before God. So that influences it, but as it it comes to church, we're called to sing songs together, and it's not out of obligation, but out of joy. And so our job, and I know that each one of you agree with this, is to engage the congregation Mm -hmm. in worship. And so how does that that look? Um, And the point is not to leave um, each worship set saying, wow, that sounded awesome, or I really enjoyed worship today. Um, Those aren't appropriate responses to worship. Um, It should be, did God um, enjoy worship today? Was he honored in worship? So these are all things we approach that affects all of our um, set planning, that affects um, the flow of the service. How are we pointing attention uh, to Jesus to help other people in their moment-by-moment decisions um, adore Christ in everything? Uh, so to engage others, yeah. to um, point them to Christ. Um, yeah, I love that you you just said that phrase, to point people to Christ. And like when I think about my philosophy of worship and um, really like our body at Westway, like that's our mission. and. Mm-hmm. Um, I was able to preach a little bit about this on Sunday, but um, on our wall in our lobby, you see the mission of Westway, and that's to proclaim Jesus. And it's as simple as that. And one of the ways that we do, yeah, and that's one of the things that we strive to do. Like I always tell my team, our mission, um, like we're a part of the whole at Westway. We Mm -hmm. are uh, a part of the body. Um, And so our goal is to do um, really what the entire church what we're asking the entire church to do as our mission, and that's to proclaim Jesus. And we seek to do that, my team, through the gifts and the abilities that God has given us. And we recognize that throughout the church, like God has gifted different people to do different things. He gave some mm-hmm. to be apostles, some to be teachers, and on the on down the lines to equip the body for works of service. Right. And so God has gifted some of us with these musical abilities. So how can we use our musical ability, our um, technical technical ability, like utilizing technology for live streams and different things like that, um, stage design, um, all of these artistic modes of expression mm-hmm. to point people to Jesus. And so, like that's our goal. I guess if you had to boil it down to like one phrase for us at Westway, that's what it would be to be how do we we point people to Jesus through the gifts and the abilities that He's given us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, we follow the same, not only to. Um, point people to Jesus but also we want to invite them and invite the Holy Spirit to come and we're leading we want to help lead and create that atmosphere into the Lord's presence Um, and I think that's one of our 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 biggest goals and our biggest um, passions of why we worship is you know we we don't do this for us on stage we don't do this for anybody else but we do it for God and while we're doing that we're creating and helping lift that atmosphere for the people of the congregation to experience that and feel his presence. Mm-hmm. Um, but like you said, again, it is it is a lifestyle and it starts not only on stage, but in each and every one of us. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, worship. Yeah. Yeah. Mitchell Berean, maybe we should relook at this because after hearing the Westway one and how it's just a, an extension of <laughs> the, uh, the whole church, philosophy um we have one that's just for the worship team and it's to boldly leverage the worship arts uh for the purpose of effective engagement um i gotta look at it for the purpose of engaging or powerful engaging worship and effective outreach and invitation so there's an aspect of the church worshiping together that's attractive to the world when Mm -hmm. when they see people adoring christ and they say wow like what where is this 
love coming from? Mm-hmm. And what is this about? And who is this Jesus that they're so in love with? Um, what a great testimony um, to unbelievers. And I, I think that's powerful. And they can sense that. Um, and they see that. And I think the gospel can be proclaimed um, in worship. But, uh, yeah, I I think our churches and the reason why we kind of do things together is because we're um we're trying to stay um in an era that's relevant to people um we we're not trying to just make them happy and say i like that style or whatever Mm -hmm. um but you know some people will say you know that's an ungodly style or or it's not good to have drums um even though it's all over in the psalms and stringed instruments and shout to the lord i mean all the loud acronyms uh Mm -hmm. in the, the old testament um and you know we're trying to serve the body and so i i think i see your churches doing it too where you try to serve the majority um well and so you might have some people that are complaining about the music being too loud while some are complaining about it being too quiet on simultaneously the Sunday, yeah. on the same <laughs> Sunday. And so, I don't know, kind of a philosophy that I have for is I just, and, and Pastor John's helped um, realize this, and um, you just try to serve kind of that 80% in the middle mm-hmm. that just love things where they're, they're at, and we're kind of riding the front side of the wave a little bit but we're not on the cutting edge yeah, right. um with the edgy stuff but just we're trying to move things forward because as soon as and i was talking to um one of our staff members seth earlier about this once you sit you're kind of stuck there and what happens and is and we've seen this in churches they get so set in a style and this is the way we like it they stop welcoming in new people and they get old and quite frankly, that those congregations die off, kind of literally, right? Um, mm-hmm. And so how do we keep things Christ-centered um, while not following culture, but um, but we're staying relevant to people? And so I think, you know, riding the front side of that wave so it propels you forward, but you're not being edgy, but you're serving your congregation. Well, that's kind of where my philosophy is on, you know, how modern music is and, mm-hmm. and what kind of elements are we engaging people with. How about you guys? Yeah, I think ours is a similar model. And like the way that I like to think about it is, I mean, first off, we all know this, but you're never going to please everybody. So there's always going to be there's always going to be people that, that are happy with uh, a certain style. And the other thing that I've seen when you look through um, like all throughout scripture is you don't ever see like when we talked about this last night, Sunday at church, but there's you see some prescriptive models where God will line out. This is exactly the way I want this to happen. Mm-hmm. And you, so you see that with the tabernacle, like um, certain things have to be made out of certain materials and only certain people can go into certain aspects of the tabernacle. God laid that out line by line, like this is how it's going to be. And then there are other things that we see specifically in the New Testament that are more descriptive, where we see things like in Acts, they devoted themselves to the apostles teaching. Um, we can kind of understand what they did to an extent but mm-hmm. without being there with them, we don't know exactly what that looks like. And I think that music is one of those things where um, God doesn't pres- or He doesn't prescribe exactly like these are the songs that you have to sing, and this is the style that you have to sing them in. Yes, drums, no drums. I mean, we see reference to drums and things like that. But yep. so we we have a little bit of liberty, I think, stylistically, and that's kind of pours into what you talked about, Ken, where. Um, we don't want to conform to the culture, but we want to be relevant to the culture. And if our worship, our singing is an outreach tool for non-believers, then mm-hmm. we want to at least be relevant for them. And so that's that's kind of my philosophy is um, like finding songs. I'm more concerned. I'm less concerned with the style necessarily, and I'm more concerned with the, the content and the meat of the songs that we're singing. So mm-hmm. um, if a song is biblical, um, if the lyrics that we're singing line up with scripture, right? That's that's yep. the, a bigger deal to me than whether or not we have drums on stage. Yeah, and I think sometimes we can um, get too caught up in the style of song yeah. and why we're choosing it, and we can go into that subject or not. But when we choose our set list, I mean, yeah, like you said, it's the meaning of the song, it's the words that we're saying, it's the the scripture that we're singing. It's that is more important than the the style or the how fast a song is or are we in cut time or full time? You know what I mean? You know, into that whole side of it. But 
it's really the meaning in the scripture that we're praying and singing. Man, should we dive into how we choose our songs? Yeah, I mean, that, I, that's I, a big topic. I don't know if we'll be able to finish it today in five minutes. Oh, man, I don't know. Um, I, I kind of started mine already. I, I have four main things that I like to think about when choosing songs. So we, we keep a list of 40 songs right now. And um, when I boiled that down, we have 52 Sundays in a year, and we sing at our church about four songs per service. And if we, we used to have a list of like a hundred. And when I broke it down, if you sing a hundred different songs, then you're singing on average each song like twice. And for people in the body, there's, it's really hard, especially with new songs to Mm -hmm. connect only hearing and singing a song twice. So, um, we cut that list down and then my forming criteria. The first one is, um, is it scriptural? Is it truth? Mm -hmm. Um, then the biggest thing that we try and do, um, is tie in everything to the topic for the week. Yeah. So are the songs we're singing this Sunday tie in with the direct scripture that we're, that we're teaching that yeah. Sunday and try and, and tie all those things together, um, proclaiming the same truth, teaching the same theology. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the other two are kind of like, is it singable? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. and are the, like just di- lyrically, are the lyrics too complex that the general person in our body like has trouble singing them? And then um, does our body connect with it? So when we introduce a new song, we kind of have like, we'll sing it a couple times and then take a break and then sing it again. And by then we should have a pretty good idea of whether our body is connecting with the lyrics of that song and singing out and joining in. Cause that's, that's the ultimate goal for us is participation mm-hmm. and engagement from the body. I'll keep mine short. I'll try to fast. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, I'll try no, to fast forward. No, you're fine. <laughs> no, I think the same thing um, with the sermon. Um, usually we have our sermon series planned where we can look ahead at the scripture and um, see how it's how it's moving. But I think, yeah, first and foremost, like we have to make sure, not first and foremost, but how, can, how does this tie into today's sermon? How can this lead into that? Because the way I think about it is worship is, worship is a sermon. It's the pre-sermon of the sermon. And so... Um, Another thing that we like to do is just, um, like you said earlier, about the cultural uh, view of it and um, what is our church singing right now? What is our church engaging in? And so we want that engagement from them. We want to help them lead into that, um, looking at songs for scripture. Um, and I love how uh, us worship leaders and um, even our senior pastors and assistant pastors can all come together and say, okay, what would be best for this series or what would be best for this Sunday? And so um, that's just a little bit of how we pick our, son- our songs and our set lists. Nice. Yeah. There's a lot of different aspects. Um, you know, we got to look at the philosophy and are our songs yeah. going to fit mm-hmm. into there. Look at the content, which is what you were talking yeah. about. Mm-hmm. The musicality. I've got a whole sheet here. Um, <laughs> yeah. What's in, in our minute. What's in our library? So I don't know. Um, maybe I'll save some for our next session or something. <laughs> but um, and and we can discuss some of those things and you can critique my uh, my song selection and we can hit another topic but uh um i'm just thinking about how we chose songs for unite night of worship yeah mm-hmm. and how yeah. that was a collaborative thing and is it something that our whole group is familiar with um was a big deal this year and uh our church is going to be able to sing that and that really narrowed things down and we chose a theme and things are things um it's past tense now. Things were in line with Romans uh, chapter 12, um, 1 and 2 especially, and um, honing in there. And I think that was a Christ-honoring worship set yeah. um, that yeah. was really thoughtful. And, and I think we followed all these principles and, and more. So uh, excited to be able to work with you guys and talk this through. So um, till next time, this is KCMI 97.1 FM, um, Hope Radio. Thanks for listening, and join us next time for Ask the Pastor.